Margarita Ramirez was able to graduate from Azusa Pacific University thanks to a generous scholarship and state financial aid, known as Cal Grants. But a new bill could prevent students like her from using those grants to attend schools with biblical views on sexuality and gender. It is precisely students like myself that are going to miss out. These, uh, this bill isn't taking away money from the schools, it's taking away money from students. Tens of thousands of students attend Christian colleges in California, and like Ramirez, many receive Cal grants. In fact, some schools say as many as one in three of their students receive this aid, which can provide as much as $10,000 a year to students from low-income families. It's a substantial part of our budget, uh, and we think it could affect us in a very negative way. A vocal critic of the bill, Dr. John Jackson, is president of William Jessup University, a Christian college just outside of Sacramento. If this bill becomes law, a student may not be able to bring that aid to William Jessup University unless we change our policies on sexual orientation and gender identity. And, and it's not a mean-spirited thing. We just are convinced, biblically speaking, that gender matters, that sexuality matters, and that marriage matters. The bill's sponsor, State Senator Ricardo Lara, says his priority is LGBTQ student safety. Since the federal government decided Title IX would include sexual orientation and gender identity, Lara believes faith-based schools that requested a religious exemption now have a, quote, license to discriminate. In a press release, Lara cites one school that refused to readmit a student who came out as gay during a leave of absence. Other schools, he says, have denied, quote, gender-appropriate housing to transgender students. Shirley Hoekstra, president of the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities, says the bill's sponsors don't have a case. Never did they go to the Christian college campuses and actually ask for facts. They presumed that people are either expelled or somehow denied admission, which is untrue. Hoekstra says that while Christian colleges want to work with these students, the schools also must maintain their religious convictions and enforce rules around them and she takes issue with parts of the bill that would prevent faith-based institutions from using religious beliefs as criteria in admissions and hiring. If you can't hire the people who are going to teach and administrate according to principles, what difference would it make then if you called yourself a particular religious institution? Attorney Greg Baylor says the bill threatens to undo the very core and mission of Christian higher education. The California government is proposing this legislation that would, at the end of the day, force these schools to choose between continuing to participate in state student aid programs and maintaining their religious identity. If the bill passes this month and the governor signs it, lawsuits are likely that could easily end up at the Supreme Court. At stake, constitutional principles like freedom of religion and freedom of association. This bill could also mean a loss of choice for low-income students, unable to afford to attend a Christian college without state aid. Some in the state legislature have apparently not understood the public good. Tens of thousands of students that we educate, many students who are first-generation college students, many students of color, many students who come from economically disadvantaged homes. For now, California's Christian community hopes to educate state lawmakers about the mission of faith-based education and that keeping their unique worldview will help make California truly diverse. Heather Sells, CBN News.